friends. Hi. Where are you going today? Um, the Natural History Museum. Museum. Yeah. Are you guys excited? Yes. It's yeah. at New York. And we yes. have new guests in our, in our airplane mode family. Yeah. Can you introduce our new friend? Kim V. It's Mary's friend. Welcome. Hey everyone, it's us again, Mary and Manny. Welcome back to our New York adventure. New York City is full of amazing places to visit, and today we're going to explore some of the most famous ones. First, we'll stop by the American Museum of Natural History, where science, dinosaurs, and space come to life. Then, we're heading to the Grand Central Terminal, one of the busiest and most beautiful train stations in the world. After that, we'll check out MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art. I heard they had, have some really cool paintings and sculptures, and finally, we'll visit the World Trade Center, a place that holds deep history and amazing city views from above. So grab your backpack and come along with us. There's so much to see and learn today. Let's go explore New York together. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff, please. The American Museum of Natural History is super famous. It's one of the biggest science museums in the world. Inside, there are a million things to discover, from dinosaur bones to giant nice. blue whales. That's right, and they even have cool exhibits about space, volcanoes, and animals from all over the world. I can't wait to see the Ocean Life exhibit. Same here. Learning about nature is way more fun when everything feels alive around you. Four, one. As we walked into the North American Mammals area, first thing we saw was a gorilla model. It looked so real. And over there, gazelles lying on the deserts, and even a giant woolly mammoth. It feels like we've traveled back in time. There's also a gems box, a giant sable antelope, and a greater kadoo. Spoke. Hey guys, I want to show you where they live on Africa. They live, they live near Ethiopia. Right, right here on Africa, like... like they, they live, live in like Somalia. East and South. Like this. East and South. I see. So a lot of them... A lot of them are in Somalia. Wait, a lot of them are you can visit there to check out. Guys, and did you know, like the game tables from Mozambique. Yes. What? Yeah. This animal is called the the great greater kudu. Scientists and artists work together for months to make every detail perfect, even the plants and light. I love how much each scene looks like. These are called dioramas. They show how animals live in their natural habitat. Yeah, that's what makes it feel like we're really standing in the wild. And moving on the next area is the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Hall. He was the president who helped protect nature and played a big part in inspiring this museum. Yup, he loved animals and explored many wild places. His passion for conservation helped create national parks and that's why there's a whole Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Hall here to honor him. It's so cold that they're so freezed. Cold. I'll so freeze cold. you. So cold. Oh, and look at this exhibit. 
It's showing early meetings between European settlers and Native Americans in New York. It helps us imagine what life looked like hundreds of years ago, how people met, traded, and shared cultures. After exploring the world of mammals, we are now stepping into a whole new world, the world of insects and biodiversity. At the entrance, there is a huge sign that says, Extinct and Endangered. That means some of these insects no longer exist in the wild. Whoa, like this one, the Rocky Mountain locust. It used to live all over North America, but now it's completely gone. And here's the Aralia shield bug. It's super rare. Scientists think it might already be extinct. Hey guys, do you want to see extinct animals? They're right here. That's not the there's actually more than I I don't know. Let me see. I think it's right. The horror glass drone fly. It's called the American Burring Beetle. And here, it only has five years left before extinct. It's still half some, but it's not, not much. All right, guys. And then have some fossils. Check this out. Fossilized insects. These are like tiny time capsules showing what bugs looked like millions of years ago. It's crazy how something so small can tell us so much about history. From the tiniest bug to the biggest beast, every creature plays a part in nature's story. Now we go to the biodiversity area. This is amazing. Look up, Mary. There are squids and octopuses hanging from the ceiling. They've got everything here. Crabs, snails, beetles, even birds and mammals. All showing how life is connected. Every creature, big or small, plays a big part in our planet's story. If one animal disappears, it can change the whole web of life. And look, the tiger and the panda. Two amazing animals that remind us why protecting wildlife matters. Nature is full of wonders and it's up to us to keep them alive. Hey guys! Hi. Hey guys! This is a tiger being extract teeth. Whoa, look at this teeth. It looks like Kong's teeth. Yeah? Bro, that little teeth is bigger than my pinky. Now we are leaving Earth behind and heading straight into space as we get in the Hayden Big Bang Theater. Wow. This is so interesting. Let's line up. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Watch out. Whoa. It feels like we're floating in space. Look, Manny, that's Earth down there. It's like we're astronauts looking back at our home planet. Big Bang Theater. Please, no eating or drinking. Before the universe became what we know today, life on Earth started from the simplest forms. Which built up layers of which built up layered mats of sediment in the Earth's shallow seas. Dermatolites are some of the earliest life forms on Earth. Tiny microbes that lived in the ocean billions of years ago. And look, the panel shows how oxygen started building up in the oceans. Without that, animals and humans wouldn't even exist. And one billion years ago, multicellular algae emerged. That's when life started getting more complex. It's crazy how long it took for life to evolve from tiny cells into plants and animals. 
here is the age of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs appeared of hundreds of millions of years before humans. We're so new compared to them. That means humans are super recent in the timeline of the universe. Surprising, right? And after traveling through time, we step into the universe hall, where stars, planets, and galaxies come alive. And there's a petrified tree. Petrified means the wood turned into a stone over millions of years. It's like a fossil tree. Imagine that this used to be a real tree long before humans existed. Then there is a whole large area with screens showing how Earth's climate works and what makes it change, like volcanoes, solar energy, and even human activity. Learning about our climate helps us understand how to protect our planet. After exploring the vast universe, we're diving into something just as breathtaking, ocean life. And this is the part Manny's been waiting for. Whoa! Look at that whale! It's bigger than our whole living room. It's a blue whale, the largest animal ever on Earth. Even bigger than dinosaurs. is frozen but below the water the birds can still swim down and fetch for fish as they are hungry Then we move to a frozen sea. Have you seen the sea lions, Manny? What? Have you seen the sea lions in real yeah, life? Yeah, at, at my last video. Here? This is the chubbiest and biggest. 300 miles, they're cute. Round are probably faster than me in water. They are lying on the rocks. After 300 miles, it's, this is it. After this, after 300 miles, this is what we see. Oh, what's up, bro? Hi! <laughs> what's up? Oh, what's up? So, what are the seals doing? Um, they're just they laying down. They tired? Even, even, we were, I'm a huge... After 300 and a half miles, this is where we end up. 350 miles. Dolphins are swimming along with the bluefin tuna. And did you know that dolphins are the geniuses of this ocean? And they are also the loudest. They talk all day. Even guys, even after 400 miles, we, this is where we... And this is where we... And uh, 400 miles. A sea otter is chilling. Run, I mean, swim, little guy. Where's Mary? Uh, guys, guys, after 500 miles, we end up in the Mariana Trench. There's no one that can reach us. It's a squid attacking a, a shark. Dark. Well, it's like so dark, right? Is that a giant squid? And and there's a whale eating it. You're Wait, right. this is not. There's no glass. That eye was so dark. Mythical yeah. creature, guys. That was kind of weird. After 500 and a half miles, this is what we see. Oh, what's this? 
Every coral branch is like an apartment building, and tiny fish, crabs, starfish, and even sea slugs all use it as their home. It's one of the busiest neighborhoods in the entire ocean. 600 miles, there are divers searching for pearls. Here's an interesting fact. Pearls are formed to stop the irritation when oysters meet irritants, such as parasites stuck inside their shells. Alright guys, after 600 and a half miles, we have to swim there. Only, Where do you want to go? Only three more miles. Let's swim with me. Where do you want to go now? 650 miles, polar bears are called seal stalkers. They wait patiently by little breathing holes in the ice. And that's right. And seals have to come up to breathe, and the polar bear just stays completely still. Sometimes for almost an hour. When the seal pops up, bam, that's how the polar bear hunts. miles. Those are walruses, the big squishy potatoes of the Arctic. They look all soft and cute and they have super thick layer of fat to keep them warm. And those long tusks are used to pull their huge bodies up onto the ice, like giant icy rock climbers. And they love hanging out in giant noisy groups. Sometimes thousands of walruses pile up together. It really looks like a mountain of potato bags. about ma manatee. The, do you know where a mermaid is? People long ago thought that manatees were mermaids and tried to hunt, hunt it down, but then they knew that it wasn't a mermaid anymore. And yeah, the reason why they think it's a mermaid is because of its tail and like its whole body, it, you know? Would you get tricked if, if you were on... The sea, sea surface? After 800 miles, we end up here. <gasps> what is that? After 800 miles, we end up here. I'm so tired. Miles. Uh, we end up here. 800 miles. We have the northern elephant seal. They are in a weird, really weird posture. Right, Mary? No, it's not weird at all. The male northern elephant seals are in that posture and making noise to establish dominance and defend their breeding territory during mating season. And after a long ocean journey, it's time for some stretching, dancing, and a quick break. Wow. Bye.